ما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي فما ان عليك انت كما اثنيت على نفسك فلك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد اذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاولين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الاخرين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في كل وقت وحين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الملل الاعلى الى يوم الدين وصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد حتى تلك الارض ومن عليها انت خير البارثين الحمد لله وبريز الله سبحانه وتعالى for calling us to gather in the remembrance of our prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم as well as those who follow him from the great corpus of those high beings that are known as prophets and the rasul the messengers themselves the great beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent and will send to earth is the great prophet Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam when Islam is considered one of the mighty prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's from the mighty five those who are known as the ulul azmi min al rusul they're known as the prophets of deep determination and resolve five mighty prophets from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amongst them is the great prophet Nuh alayhi salam no and from amongst them is the great prophet Isa ibn Maryam Jesus of our topic and he's going to center around alayhi salam but amongst them is the great and mighty prophet Moses the son of Imran alayhi salam but amongst them is the great prophet Sayyidina Ibrahim ibn Tarih alayhi salam and from amongst them is the supreme prophet the Imam of all of the prophets the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam strange times always and they're going to be characterized by these seismic shifts that will and occur inside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And that's one of the things that the Imams of the religion that they often inform us that the religion could be divided into two aspects, two types, things that they call thawabit and things that they call mutaghiyarat. Thawabit or mutaghiyarat. Thawabit are those constants, those things that regardless of time, that regardless of place, that regardless of age, that regardless of people, they're constant. Huh? But likewise, you also have the mutaghiyarat, the seismic shifts that will occur inside of time, inside of place, and likewise often inside of people likewise. And no doubt as time begins to speed up, as the Prophet ﷺ informed us in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, the signs of the end of time, يتقارب الزمان, that time begins to speed up, the Prophet ﷺ said. And other moderns are going to tell us that man in our day and age, experientially, that we experience a 14-hour day, not a 24-hour day. And so we see the Sidq of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam His truthfulness become apparent. But of the thing that is constant and is the most important constant and throughout the ages is the constant of our attachment to the Prophet himself sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. And this is the great determiner and it will determine who we are ultimately with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and where our darajat, where our degrees are going to lie inside of the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great descent of Jesus the Son of Mary السلام, will bring a yani, wondrous reality and wondrous news. And for most, the most wondrous thing that the Son of Mary السلام, is going to bring is news of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He's not just going to speak as a man about the Prophet وسلم, and Isa ibn Maryam is a man. Bashar, walaysa kal bashar. And he's human, but he's not like human, the nature of the Prophets themselves. And he's not only going to speak about the Prophet ﷺ from the degree or the, the station of the Sahaba themselves. They say Isa ibn Maryam is a companion of the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith in the Bukhari, a hadith in Sahih Muslim likewise. That the Prophet ﷺ on the night that he was taken on this great journey beyond the cosmos until he stood in front of Rabbul Izza, the Lord of Mine sallallahu he meets Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam. He meets Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam at Beit al at the great house of Jerusalem upon earth. Wa Isa ibn Maryam hay, and Jesus is alive. He meets Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam in the second sky alongside Ibn Zakaria, John the Baptist alayhi salam. And Jesus hay, is alive. He meets Isa ibn Maryam in his sojourn in the heavens. As in the tradition of the Prophet ﷺ, with the Prophet ﷺ, alongside the Prophet Musa, alongside the Prophet Ibrahim, and alongside the Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, on the night of Isra al Mi'raj, that they would speak about the nature of the hour, when the hour will fall. And first and foremost, the question was level that the Prophet Ibrahim 
And Ibrahim khalas raised his hand from him. Yani, that, that is not knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And then Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran is the next to speak and likewise he refuses to enter into the affair of the affairs of the end of time. Until it comes to the great Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus son of Mary alayhi salam, he's the one who takes on what, this actual reality about the issues at the end of time. And that's one of the reasons why he's in the second sky. Because the second sky in the heavens is what's called the Alam al Mithal. It's called, it's called the world of spiritual impressions, the world of metaphor. And it's the world in which everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed is going to happen up until the end of time. It manifests inside of that second sky. That's one of the reasons why the Prophet sallallahu found the son of Mary alayhi salam inside of the second sky alongside Ibn al-Khal, alongside his cousin John the Baptist, Ibn Zakaria alayhi salam. And so he meets Jesus, the son of Mary, wa huwa hayy, and he's alive inside of the heavens. According to some ulama, upon the descent of the Rasul sallallahu back to earth on Israel Mi'raj, when he reaches Beit al maqdis Jerusalem once again, likewise he greatly engages the great Jesus of Surah Mary alayhi salam, wa huwa hayy, and he's alive. What is the point that renders Jesus of Surah Mary alayhi salam a sahaba, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? Because a companion by definition meant it's whoever meets the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallama wa huwa hayy whilst alive wa amana bihi and he believes in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama wa mata ala iman and he dies upon faith faith thalika isa bin maria as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that is Jesus the son of Mary and so when he speaks of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama he can speak about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama min maqam sahaba from the station of the Sahaba themselves, رضي الله تعالى عنهم وارضاهم. But the affair arqam in that, the affair is a lot loftier, greater than that. Although there's benefit in that reality. What is benefit in, in, in the reality of Jesus being a companion of the Prophet sallallahu That any single one of us who meet Jesus on the Mary alayhi salam, we become tabi'een of the Sahaba. And then we enter the type of the sphere of those of the khayrul qurun qarni. The best generation is my generation. The Prophet said in Bukhari that the ones who come after them, the students of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and then those who come after them, that's why Tabi'een. They the three glorious generations, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And perhaps that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will for one of us to be from amongst those glorious generations in Tal al Umar, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a long life. That's like the tradition that you find inside of, of, of the Imam Hakam and they support him, rahimahullah ta'ala, when Imam Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu warda, when he's speaking to his banu, speaking to his people, and he's from the tribe of Dos, the people of Yemen, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu warda. And saying that Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu warda, he said, any one of you who live in Tala Umruka, if you live a long time, then akhri ala Isa ibn Maryam as salam, give my salam to Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. Stranger things have happened at sea in the age of seismic shifts. Strange things happen. And one of the things that we know about Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, huwa hayy, he's alive. And there are many of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted extended life for who can manifest inside the age of Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, when he manifests at the end of time. But his knowledge of the Rasul is not just from maqam, a sahaba, from the degree of the companions. But more importantly, his knowledge of the Rasul, he will speak min maqam and nabuwa from the actual station of prophecy in and of itself. And the station of a mighty prophet, according to the people of Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he's the fourth greatest prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent after the great Ibrahim ibn Tariq and Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran. And Jesus has an occupation, or we could say a preoccupation. And the preoccupation of Jesus is this constant this connection to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. And that's really important because in the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Imam ibn Abi Shaybi radiallahu alayhi wa sallam relates in his musannaf la yanzilanna Isa ibn Maryam that Jesus will descend the riwayah la yahbitanna Isa ibn Maryam that Jesus son of Mary will descend and he's going to manifest realities but amongst the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what he said that he's going to find people innahum lamithlakum Verily, they are like you, O Khair, or even better, the Prophet Sallallahu has said. Verily, they are like you, or better, the Prophet Sallallahu said the second time. Verily, they are like you, or even better, the Prophet Sallallahu has said. People, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, they've reached a degree, a rank, 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that degree and rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always relates to that constant, which is your connection to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. That's Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. When we consider the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. It's a tradition that you find inside of the great works of the Imams of Hadith radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda and it relates on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, it, it's a moment which is one of the most dire moments inside of what human history, which was the passing of our dear Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. And the move of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam from hayatuna dunya, from this dunya, yeah, this world that is ultimately an illusion into the world of the Barzakh, into a world that is a higher order, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, until Rafiq Al A'la, the Supreme Company. And one of the things that faced the companions after the fact that this was the, 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 the most difficult moment for the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to undertake. Yeah, why wouldn't the companions, Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam, be sad upon the departure of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That according to the Imams of religion, that is tantamount to punishment. Uh, the nature of any type of you know, enjoyment or, or reward is always about the issue of ishtima. It's like the coming together. Like when you come together with those whom you love, that's tantamount to reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when there's a type of separation and iftiraq, that is the reality of punishment. That's the nature of the gender of Allah. Gender is ishtima, ma Allah. It's the union with God, ishtima, ma Rasulillah. It's the union with the Messenger of Allah, ishtima, ma anbiya. It's the union with the Prophets, nabiyina wa siddiqina wa shuhadai wa salihina wa hasuna ulaika rafiq, as Allah Ta'ala says. Your union with the Prophets, or the voracious, or the martyrs, or the righteous, what a blessed company that is. But the nature of hell is distance, iftiraq. Is your separation from God. And that's why you see a tradition inside of Sahih Muslim, inside of the Sahih Bibam Muslim, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed that those who were cast into hellfire, the hellfire of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and they have no punishment in hell. Right? They don't experience anything that we know as punishment inside of hell. Ulama tahiyyur bihi, that the ulama radiallahu anhu, what does that mean? You're inside of hell and you don't experience punishment. So, so the people of Basira said, no, the punishment is to be in hell. Because it's tantamount to distance and separation from God. Okay. And so the Sahaba, like Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu, wardahum, they're feeling the type of separation with the ascent of the Prophet sallallahu into the world of Barzakh, the world of Aqaib, of realities. So Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik says, Aflam akulla shay. Everything became dark at that moment upon the death of the Rasul. But one of the things that they're faced with is what do we do with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? Where do you bury the Messenger of God? And there are people who are familiar with prophecy, the Sahaba. But Abu Bakr Siddiq, he saves the day. It is written in Nabi Shaykh that he makes mention saying Abu Bakr Siddiq that a Nabi la yuhawwal min makanihi. That a Prophet is not moved from the place that he dies. He's not moved from the place where he dies. Bury him right in the exact place that he dies. Sallallahu alayhi And he died upon the mattress of Sayyidina Aisha. Radiallahu anha wa daha. And so they lift the Prophet sallallahu alayhi They remove the mattress. They dig beneath the mattress. And that is where the Prophet sallallahu is buried to this very day. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. What is interesting about our constant, about attachment to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is that the fact inside of a hadith, multiple a hadith inside of the Sahih of Imam al Bukhari and others, is that the Prophet وسلم, informed us where Jesus, son of Mary, was buried. And Jesus, son of Mary, السلام, if you take two types of riwayat that relates to the death of Jesus, the son of Mary, السلام, and he shall die in the tradition of Nu'im ibn Hamad, that Jesus, the son of Mary, his first life is not like his second life. Those 33 and a half years, he lived for 33 and a half years before the ascent. And the first ascent of Jesus of Mary السلام, upon the face of the earth. That life of Jesus of Mary السلام, is very different to the life that he's going to experience when he descends once again. السلام, and he will descend. And the belief that he descends, Shay Mutawatir, 
It is something that is affirmed by a, yeah, a multiple chain of transmission that will benefit what we call a state of sainthood in the fact that this Imam of the Muslims is going to descend, alayhi salam. But Jesus, alayhi salam, is going to be buried either in the womb of Sayyid Aisha. That's what's understood by the ulama. But in one of the traditions, it's mentioned that Sayyid Isa ibn Maryam is buried in the same grave as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam such that we are raised so as here. We will be raised from the face, from the same grave, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam but Jesus on the bed, alayhi wa sallam. That is why to this day, only one space remains inside the Hujr of Aisha. After the death of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two years later, it's where Abu Bakr al-Siddiq is buried. After the death of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu wa warda, ten and a half years later, it's where Umar ibn Khattab is buried. And after the death of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, there's one space left and nobody is given the place. Not Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu wa warda, who's buried in Bakir. Not Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, who's some habit is buried in Bakir. That's a position of the Muslims, they say that. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib is, is buried in Karamala Hawaji. Not Sayyidina Hassan, the, Sikh, the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whose desire was to be buried right there with his grandfather Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when he told his great brother Sayyidina Hussain Alaihi Wasallam to ask Aisha upon my death for the request to be buried inside of what the Hujra alongside our grandfather Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if Aisha refuses, then there's some knowledge that the great woman has why she will not allow me to be buried. And upon the death of Sayyidina Hassan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa warda, Sayyidina Hussain goes to Sayyidina Aisha and asks Aisha, radiallahu anha wa warda, have a permission for Sayyidina Ali, for Sayyidina Hassan, radiallahu anhu ibn Ali, to be buried inside of the hujra of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Aisha, radiallahu anha wa warda, politely refuses. And Sayyidina Hussain, this is his beloved older brother, Sayyidina Hussain, in the riwayah, he wanted to enforce the burial in that blessed place. This is a constant. Proximity to the Prophet ﷺ would steal. That he goes home and he unsheathes, he brings out his sword, Sayyidina Hussein, radiallahu anhu wa ta, to enforce the burial of Sayyidina Hassan in the hujra of the Prophet ﷺ, the last remaining space. But then people remind Sayyidina Hussein salam, what did Hassan say? That if Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha refuses, politely refuses, there's good reason why she's refused. That good reason will become manifest among the tongues of many. So, so upon the death of Aisha herself, she likewise got buried inside of the fourth space. And it's her space. This is her house, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa daha. But she likewise buried inside of Bakir. So where is, what is the space for? Buried of Isa ibn Maria. That is for Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. But one of the things that we have to ponder, it's not just that he's buried there. That, that is the exact place that he dies. That's what you have to ponder. The exact place he is standing on, or sitting on, or lying on, when he dies, that he's in the hujra of the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa uh, what do you think he's doing there? Radiallahu anhu wa arda. That you're going to find that Jesus, upon his descent, that he makes it an annual, habitual practice to visit the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the riwayah, the, the years are mentioned in the hijaj, measured in the hijaj. In the hajjahs, Jesus sort of made it, alayhi salam, will make. And ten, in one riwayah, ten hijaj. Another riwayah, thirty hijaj. Like thirty continual years, you find Jesus get a raddad al haram. You be going between the haram of Mecca and the cover, the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Why? Can you salli ala nabi to say salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's the constant, the connection to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And in the tradition of يعني, Abu Ya'la, Hadith Sahih, in the tradition of Abu Ya'la, what is the way that he addresses the Prophet وسلم, with? And we note this, Ya Muhammad. That's his way. Ya Muhammad. As he stands in front of the grave of the Prophet, وسلم, O Muhammad. And you have to understand that as it's meant to be understood. This is not an issue of Hawa. And what does it mean according to your own opinion? As in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, ittabibu ara'akum, the Sahaba would say, find fault in your own opinion. This deen is not the deen of opinion, but this deen is the deen of rijal, the deen of transmission, that goes all the way back to Sayyid al-Rijal, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, Ya Muhammad, layalidanna Isa ibn Maryam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahi wa sallam, said it in Nu'im ibn Hamad, that he will come on to me, وَسَيُسَلِّمْ عَلَيَّهِ He will give me salams. 
يا محمد ولا أردن عليه سلام and I shall retain the greetings of salams back to Jesus the Son of Mary alayhi salam. That's Jesus the Son of Mary. And the point is, is in order to be from his people, we have to be from the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Jesus will find people, sulaha, that they're righteous, ka sulaha men mother, that they're just like the righteous who have lived before. Those who surround Jesus sort of Mary alayhi salam. That's the good news. <laughs> but maybe the bad news that there's 800 men and 400 women who surround Jesus sort of Mary alayhi salam. 800 men, that's not many. 400 women, the elite around Jesus, that's not many. And of those who will be resurrected around Jesus are those who, mashallah, tabarakallah, tasulah, amen, mabah. They're like the righteous and who are long gone. They've lived on the earth since time immemorial. That's the nature of his age. Just like Jesus has been given extended life, then many of those who have been given extended life will likewise manifest once again in the time of Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam. And of those, mashallah, tabarakallah, may Allah ta'ala bless and raise, and who's not going to be afforded the great opportunity to meet Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam, is one of the most famous people of extended life. Who was that man built here? Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam, mentioned inside of Surah al -Kahf. Khidr. And the one who meets the great Prophet Moses alayhi salam. And yes, the difference of opinion amongst Ahl al-Islam is Khidr still alive. But the dominant opinion, mashallah, tabarakallah, he still lives. Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam. And many of our teachers, and you want to meet Khidr, you can go and meet him there. Masjid Ba Alawi. Friday after Asr. Praise every week inside our great masjid inside him today. Khidr alayhi salam. Akada, we took from Senna, from the, the Rijal, the people. Khidr. Dhamma's opinion, he still lives. And in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, he is not going to be afforded the, uh, the great honor of standing in the ranks of Jesus and Mary alayhi salam because he's of those who's killed by the Antichrist in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, right on the gates of Medina to Al-Munawwara, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam says when he comes unto and faces the Antichrist, the Antichrist will address whom? Sayyidina Khidr and say, do you believe I am God? And Khidr, no, you ain't God. And so the Antichrist unsheathes a sword and he strikes Khidr right there, the Mafraq al Ras, right there on his head, the parting of his head. And he splits him into two, just like a magician, the illusion. And then the Antichrist in the Hadith al Bukhari, he walks right between the two sides of Khidr, just like a magician, the art of illusion. And then he says to the body of Khidr, Qum, and he come back to life. And then the body of Khidr, the Prophet Sallallahu said the two halves, they come back together and life is restored inside of Khidr. And then he addresses the Antichrist Khidr. Now do you believe I'm God? Khidr alayhi salam says, all you have saved to do is increase me in certainty that you're the Antichrist. That's all you've saved to do. And then the Antichrist kills Khidr. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he's the greatest martyr ever or the greatest martyr upon that day, Sayyidina Khidr. And it's thereafter the issue of the descent of the Jeep of Jesus on the Mary alayhi salam will be ushered in. Which inshallah maybe in our next gathering we'll discuss the issue of the Antichrist, where the Antichrist will be slain by the great Jesus on the Mary alayhi salam, who's going to descend once again. He's going to descend, mashallah tabarakallah alayhi salam, inside of where? Inside of Damascus. Inside in particular, inside of the mosque of Banu Umayya. Although some have it upon the gates of Damascus, the eastern gates of Damascus. But it descends at the white minaret on the eastern side of what? Of the, of the great mosque of Banu Umayyah. And he comes down, alayhi salam, in one riwayah upon a cloud, in another riwayah upon angels, like the Hadith of Sahih Muslim. And he's with angels as he descends, yani from the heavens, alayhi salam, into the very mosque of Banu Umayyah. And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, then the, the mosque will become crowded with the different members of the Abrahamic faith. And from amongst them, the Jews, who are going to stake a claim to Jesus of the Mary alayhi salam. And he rejects that claim. And the Christians, who likewise are going to stake a claim to Jesus of the Mary alayhi salam, and he rejects that claim right there in the mosque of Banu Umayyad, the Umayyad mosque inside of Damascus, the old city. And then khalas, both the Jews and the Christians, that they leave the mosque of Banu Umayyad. And they leave the mosque for Jesus and his people, who are the Muslims who surround him, mashallah, tabarakallah. And thereafter, Jesus, alayhi salam, is going to take flight 
all the way from Damascus to Jerusalem in and of itself. And that's where he's going to engage the Mahdi, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Who at that point is a point, his forces are going to be holed in inside of Jerusalem, surrounded by the forces of the Antichrist. Who are now trying to quote unquote the enforce an embargo upon Jerusalem in order to force the army of the Mahdi out of war out of Jerusalem. Upon which the Mahdi, who remains in Jerusalem inside of knowledge that the Antichrist cannot enter Jerusalem, can't. He can't enter Medina, he can't enter Mecca, and he cannot enter Beit al Maqdis, Jerusalem. So they remain in. Although the embargo takes a grip upon them such that they be there, they have no food whatsoever. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives us another principle that relates to the great Jesus of Mary Alayhi Salam Who to whom? Yawma idhin dhikrullah The only thing that sustains them upon that day is the dhikr of Allah is the remembrance of God That's who to the clue, that's the food of souls And we make mention of this because this is the constant of connection to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of the last contracts in the hadith of Ah in Mustad of Ahmed of Sayyidina Mu'adh ibn Jabal is that the Prophet gave this Ummah la yazal lisanu karatban bi dhikrillah always ensure that your tongue is moist in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's important that we're people of dhikr and dhikr is not something that is benefits when it's in frugality anytime you see dhikr or you hear dhikr inside of the Quran وَذَّاكِرُونَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Allah Ta'ala always qualifies dhikr with abundance so that it becomes your kut the, the, the very reality that will sustain your soul when you are bila head, when you have no provision whatsoever and so the Mahdi and his people that they are upon dhikr I mean they eat dhikr they drink dhikr MashaAllah heck are the people of the Mahdi huh? Until the point comes when now they feel so, mashallah, strengthened and fortified, they decide now we go on. We go out beyond the boundaries of Jerusalem to face the army of the Antichrist. Fajr. And the Mahdi is instructing the actual word, the Sufu Pistawa, as the Prophet says, Sufu Pistawa, straighten your ranks. As the Prophet said, Kayla Tachtalif, Kulubukum, so your hearts do not differ. That the issue is Tawheed al Safuf, the unity of the Muslims, the unity of the hearts. And the microcosm or the symbol of that unity of the Muslims you find in the very ranks of Salah. And there is the concern of whom the great MashaAllah Tabarakallah Mahdi Muhammad Abdullah to ensure that the lines are straight for Fajr. And just as they're about to begin prayer, there enters Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam. Alongside those Muslims who gather around them from the city of Damascus, that they come on. And then there you see. The movement is just between the Mahdi and Jesus. With the Mahdi now, Kahkari. He moves back in order for Jesus to lead the prayer. And Jesus says, no, this is takrimah to Allah. And the, the honor of God for the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Use of the leaders, ba'adukum li ba'ad. Use lead each other. And those leaders in particular, fear constant, Ahlul Bayt, from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the Hashimiyun. That's a constant of the religion in and of itself. Al Aimma min Quraysh. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that hadith was to work at the highest level of transmission. That the leaders of this Ummah are from Quraysh. And in particular from Banu Hashim, the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahlul Bayt. And there's Jesus of the first things you see that he does, he gives it up to Ahlul Bayt. And the Mahdi is the one who leads prayer. And thereafter, after prayer, Fajr, they're going to discuss about what's going to happen. Then after Asr, Wal Asr, Inna Linsana fi Khusr, Illa Ladina Amin wa Amilu Salihati wa Tawa Saw bil Haqi wa Tawa Saw bi Sabah, that they go beyond Jerusalem to face the army of the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist now sees Jesus as one of Mary alayhi salam, and he'll recognize Jesus. And Jesus don't look like you know, Michelangelo or Da Vinci's cousin. Don't look like that. And the people got pictures of Jesus all over their walls inside of their books of films the whole night. And he don't look like that. And so when he descends, are you looking for that type of Jesus? You got the wrong man, he don't look like that. And that's really important because we took the description of Jesus and Sadiq al Mashtuq from the mouth of the truthful one, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And it's not accidental that the actual tradition which is favored that relates to the description of Jesus is what Imam al Bukhari calls the golden transmission. 
What's the golden transmission? From Imam Malik to Nafi' to Abdullah ibn Umar and Rasulullah. That's called the golden transmission by Imam al-Bukhari. No transmission higher than that called to the Imam al-Bukhari. Muhammad al-Ismail radiallahu anhu warda. And the Prophet Sallallahu sees Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam and gives us a description of him. What is that? The face that is dark skin. Adam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like the most beautiful dark skinned man that I've ever seen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Hadith there, MashaAllah Tabarak and Namata Rabbi Bamal, Hadith with the golden chain of transmission. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will describe the hair of Jesus, that it's limma. Limma. Limma that is between its natural hairline and the shoulders. He has longer hair, but it doesn't reach his shoulders, although in the riwayah that it does touch the shoulders of Jesus, alayhi salam. And it does, but he has longer hair, alayhi salam. A riwayah of Ja'ad, another riwayah sept. Contradict me, Ja'ad means curly hair, just like the hair of our Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another riwayah sept, that is quote unquote straightened out. And that's similar to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when he would comb his hair, his hair is curly, but when he finished combing his hair, his hair was like waves. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. Similar to the description of Jesus alayhi salam. Similar in height to the Rasul. Rab'a. Prophesied of average height. Around six foot in height. Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam. The Prophet sallam says he's well proportioned, well built. Jesus the son of Mary as all of the Prophets are. But Jesus is astoundingly beautiful alayhi salam. And when the Antichrist sees him, make no mistake, he knows who he's gazing at. So that he begins to move from the outskirts of Jerusalem to what is known as Bab Lud. Bab Lud, a place called Bab Lud. Bab Lud, where is Bab Lud? You can go on your Google it and you can Google it and you'll find Lud. And so it's a, it's a district on one opinion that it's actually inside of Tel Aviv. Some say it's Tel Aviv itself, what is now quote unquote the capital of quote unquote Israel. Some say it's Tel Aviv, Lud. Some say Lud, which is on maps, it's a, um, an area yeah, in Tel Aviv, like BD-8. <laughs> Not to scare you, but like that, yeah. <laughs> there, Lud. Others, which I think is more interesting, they say that Lud is exactly where it's, yeah, the Ben Gordian airport. And <laughs> the, the Antichrist trying to catch a plane. <laughs> Ain't gonna catch no plane. And then when he engages Jesus on the way, alayhi salam, we subhanallah the hadith, he begins to yadhub. Yadhub literally means to melt. You know like the, you know, the wizard of Oz? <laughs> and it begins to melt. That's literally what the hadith says. It begins to melt upon the sight of Jesus there. When Jesus catches them up. And then Jesus, alayhi salam, will unsheath a dagger. And then, khalas, he's going to stab the Antichrist, kill the Antichrist with a dagger. And then he's going to show the blood of the Antichrist to the believing fraternity. That's Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam. And that's going to be one of the greatest war achievements in world history is the slaying of the Antichrist. That which which Allah will speak about that can only happen upon the hands of Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam as in the hadith of Al-Bukhari where Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab attempts to kill a manifestation of the Antichrist known as Safi ibn al-Sayyad inside the Medina to al-Munawwara. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab wants to kill him and the Prophet Sallallahu says no. Because yani, if he is the Antichrist you have no power to walk over him. That's for Jesus the Son of Mary, and if it's not the Antichrist, well, he killed an innocent man. Uh, so the Prophet yeah, restrained Umar from actually killing this Safi ibn Sayyid in the Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. And so that's the manifestation of Jesus upon the face of the earth. And then you're going to see many wondrous things appear around Jesus, of those people who've been given extended life. From amongst them, you'll find many of them inside the boy, inside the Surah al -Kahf. From amongst them is Ashab al -Kahf, the companions of the cave. The hadith, the companions of the cave will be resurrected to be around Jesus son of Mary alayhi salam and they're not fully dead. I they're in a state of sleep at this moment inside of Antakya, inside of Turkey. And you know six aristocrats, six Turkish aristocrats, the one shepherd, and the only one Allah Ta'ala mentions by name, a dog whose name is Raqim in Surah Al-Kaf, Raqim. That's the dog, the eighth of the one of the companions of the cave. All of them will be resurrected and they're going to be from the companions of Jesus the Son of Mary alayhi salam. Likewise also you'll find around Jesus the Son of Mary alayhi salam of his companions who in the tradition Abu Nu'im and Dalai al Nabuwa relates whose name is what? His name is Zuraib ibn Barthalma. Barthalma like Bartholomew. 
And so many of that Zuraib ibn al Thalma is the companion of Jesus, the disciple of Jesus, whose name is yani, Bartholomew. Some call him Nathaniel, of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Salam. That he's going to be one. Likewise, he's going to manifest once again in the hadith, in what in Abu Naim relates that the companions of the Prophet وسلم, when they took the Iraq, when they took Iraq huh, in a place called Hanwan, under the leadership of Sayyidina Sa'ad Nabi Waqas, of those who's under the leadership of Sayyidina Sa'ad, the so called Nadla ibn Muawiyah. And then Sayyidina Sa'ad commands Sayyidina Nadla to take all of the booty from the spoils in the battle of, with the Iraq into the mountains of Hilwan in Iraq, which he complies, takes it to the mountain. And thereby, when they're about to pray and they begin to call the Adhan, they hear a voice repeating, speaking as they were, as they uttered the Adhan. And when this man emerges, he explains who he is. That my name is Zuraib ibn Barthalma. Uh, and I am Wafdullah. I am from the delegation of God. Wa Waft Rasulillah. The delegation of the Messenger of God. Wa Waft Isa ibn Maryam. From the delegation of Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, who sent me to these mountains to await his final coming. The hadith there in the Dalail of Abu Nu'im, radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda. Eventually he disappears. Say the Nabla informs Sa'ad. Say the Sa'ad when he returns to Medina to Munawara, he informs Umar ibn Khattab. Because Barth, Ibn al Thalma says, Akhri ala Umar ibn Khattab salam. I didn't meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who gave my salam to Umar ibn Khattab who was the caliph who was alive at that point in time. And when they give salams to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, Umar ibn Khattab said that's the wasi, that's the legacy of Jesus who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us about. And he commands the companion to return back to Iraq and to call the Adhan in the mountains of Iraq. And they wandered the mountains of Iraq for 40 days calling the Adhan non-stop in order to bring him from beyond the veil once again. But he doesn't manifest. But he'll manifest there with Jesus, the Son of Mary, alayhi salam. Great manifestation. Ashab al kaf from the disciples who are around Jesus. And inshallah, tabarakallah, maybe from us. Maybe from our offspring. Like Sayyidina Abu Huraira would say, radiallahu anhu, that when will Jesus manifest? And there's a secret in his way, Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, warda. Abu Huraira would say, Jesus will manifest, that he would look into the crowd, and then he would see the youngest person in the crowd. And he would say, if that person lives long, Khalas, they will meet Jesus. And the secret is if the person lives long, Allah grants them extended life. It's not like they lived 50, 60, 70 years and never met Jesus. The secret is in the words of one of the great companions of the Rasul, who has knowledge of the realities at the end of time, of somebody who will meet Jesus, who also stood in the ranks of Abu Hurairah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda. And so we ask Allah to have for tawfiq in that regard. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the type of sifa, the type of attributes that render us from the companions of this great reality. Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam informs us in traditions in the Bukhari, the Muslim, and others, yani, traditions about Jesus. That Jesus the son of Mary will descend. And he will descend as a hakaman. He will descend adlan. He will descend muqsikan. He will descend in a riwayat imam. What? About the first three words the Prophet used, Adlan, Hakaman, Muqasitan, that all of those words are names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the realities of Jesus, but Jesus alayhi salam, that he is Ruhullah. He is the spirit of God. He is Kalimatullah. He is the word of God. And one of the secrets you find inside of the reality of Jesus, being both Ruhullah and Kalimatullah, you find in his relationship with two of the greatest prophets ever. Because he has a radical relationship with Ruhi, my spirit, who is the Prophet And he has a radical relationship with Kalimullah. Kalimatullah, the one who heard the words of God. Moses, the son of Imran, He's from Banu Israel, Jesus, from a perspective, through his great mother Maryam, alayhi salam. He was sent to the children of Israel. I mean, though they are his people from a perspective. Although Jesus does not have a people, because to have a people, you need a father. Jesus is born without father. But through his mother, his people are born in Israel. And so he has a relationship with Moses, the son of Imran, alayhi salam. That was the great law that preceded Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. But of the most interesting things about Jesus is going to fulfill elements of his Basharia. 
those realities that Jesus, who is a very, very a different type of prophet, that he, he, from a perspective, is the most radical, overworldly prophet that has ever existed, Jesus. And it, it, it's as if there's no human dimension to Jesus, alayhi salam. Like he's a spirit and where. That's all he is, Jesus. To, to be with him, to take from him is a high affair. We mention of, of our teachers, mashallah, tabarakallah, the great Marabat al-Hajj, Wilf Ahfur, the great Imams of the age. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you told will umrahu. May Allah ta'ala give him extended life. That Marabat al-Hajj, his people are Bedouin, they're Bedouins. And so when he, he grows up, that you alight in an area and you travel seasonally for water. Okay? They're Bedouins. And the Marabat al-Hajj, mashallah, tabarakallah, that Times would come when they arrived in a new area, they'd find that he would go missing. They didn't know where Marabd al-Hajj was. I mean, Marabd al-Hajj is still alive, you can go to Marabd al-Hajj. And his sons and his people are still alive, you can go and verify with Marabd al-Hajj. And so they wouldn't find Marabd al-Hajj. And then later, what they would find out, that Marabd al-Hajj would be found inside of the cemeteries of the Muslims. As soon as he alighted in a place, he would go out of the encampment and he would ask, the nearest Bedouins he found, where do you bury your dead? And then, when they showed him where they buried their dead, that he would go and he would just yeah, he, and camp inside of the graveyards. And later they would ask him, yeah, he, what's your business with the graveyards? And he's young, so much he's in his teens. And Murat al Hajj would say, I find what? I find a greater intimacy with the dead than with the living. That's what he would say, greater intimacy with those who are of the grave than those who are alive. And the Prophet Sallallahu would remind us, Rib nafsa kamin ashab al qubur You should consider yourself to be from the people of the grave. That's who you should consider yourself to be from. But then likewise, what they would also find, Amr Abdul Hajj, when you begin to speak knowledge about ilm, they would find that the knowledge that Amr Abdul Hajj was speaking at such a tender age was beyond the confines of the madrasa what's called the mahtara, the scholars who were inside of his environment. And they didn't understand where he was getting this knowledge from. That was beyond the scholars, even his own father. Uh -huh. And so they'd ask Murabd al-Hajj, where did you get that knowledge from? And the Murabd al-Hajj would say, Jesus the Son of Mary comes unto me and teaches me. I have Jesus as a teacher. That's of his great spiritual encounters, Murabd al-Hajj. Jesus as a teacher, giving him realities, haqqaiq, especially of the world of spirit, and the world of soul. And so Jesus, after his descent, after the killing of the Antichrist, he goes onto the place of Musa, where Musa got married from, Media. The northwestern coast of Arabia. He goes onto Media. And as the Prophet ﷺ mentions, that Layat Azawaj, he will marry a woman from Bani Fulan, from the tribe of so and so. Where you led Lahu. So he will marry, he never married in his first manifestation, but he marries after his descent. And we know where he marries. He marries from a tribe called Juvam. And the tribe of Juvam is the same family of Sayyidina Shu'aib. Shu'aib, which Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran marries into. That's where Jesus marries into. It's what's important that he marries into the actual family that Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran, the offspring that Sayyidina Musa marries into. Connection with Moses. What becomes more important, he has children. And then if you have children, Isa ibn Maryam, what are you going to call your children? What are you going to call them? Imam al to be in his tafkira, radiallahu anhu wa rda, he says he has two sons. First son, he calls him Muhammad. That's the first son of Jesus. Second son, he calls him Musa. Yeah, that's the Messiah. Look at the names he chooses. And those names, no doubt, are about the, the twin, the dual connection that Jesus has to the Prophet of Banu Israel, Moses, the son of Imran, and to the Supreme Prophet, our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. That's the constant, his connection with the Messenger of Allah, even in the naming of his first and his elder son, Muhammad, yani alayhi salam. That's his family. The Riwayah is going to remain amongst them for 19 years, one nine years, in the name of Muhammad. 19 years that he will remain amongst what the tribe of Judah, Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, leaders of Ahlul Islam, mashallah tabarakallah. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring about a, a great calamity and in the age of Jesus. Revelation comes to Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, whilst he is amongst the people of, what, of Juban, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal to him to take those who are with him to Tuth, 
to Mount Tur, Sinai, where Moses stood, the Kalimat Allah, and the way that God was imprinted upon Moses, the son of Imran, alayhi salam. Take your people there because now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unleashes a people the like of which, khalas, the, their last manifestation of those who have been given extended life that has not been witnessed before in this manifestation. Who's that? Gog and Magog. Okay, and that's what you see the emergence of Gog and Magog. And our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith al Bukhari. It's a hadith, you see the transmission, transmissions that was related on the authority of Imam Zuhri, the Imam of Medina to Munawwara, who took it from Sayyidina Urwa ibn, ibn, ibn Zubayr, radiallahu anhu, who then takes it from the great women of the companions, takes it from the daughter Zainab, Umm Salama, who takes it from the wife of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Habiba, who takes it from the wife of the Rasul Zainab bin Jahash, who then says that the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, woke up, Fazi'an, he woke up in, in a state of tribulation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can see he was in a state of tribulation, trepidation, fear. Ihbar rawajha, that his face is red. And then the Prophet says, Wailun lil Arab. He says, Woe to the Arabs. Min sharrin qad qatara. From evil that is approaching. Then he says, Futiha rad mujuj wa majuj mithla hadi. Wa aqad ashra, or different rewires. Huh? He joins between these two fingers. Huh? That he says that the rodan, which is the wall of Dhul Qarnayn, that Dhul Qarnayn in the Quran, if you mention in Surah Al-Kahf in the Quran, the narrative, mentioned in the chapter of the Prophets, the narrative about Gog and Magog, huh? these people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, the likes of which we have not seen. Maybe Hollywood's trying to depict their like, but we've not seen them right your line. And unbelievable creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created who were from the very stock of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. A different Realities of where they come from. Some of them say that they're the offspring of Yafit ibn Nuh, and the son of Nuh alayhi salam. Okay, I that their forefather was on the ark with Sayyidina Noah, Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh has three yani, important sons, major sons. For amongst them, Sam. And Sam is the forefather of what you call the Samites. Ham, who's the forefather of what you call the Hamites. And then also Yafit. And Yafit is the forefather of Gog and Magog. That's the vastly dominant opinion. Although one of the great Imams of the Tabi'een, whose name is Ka'b al Ahbar, the great rabbi who was formerly a rabbi and becomes Muslim at the hands of the companions from the Yemen, say the Ka'b al Ahbar. Ka'b al Ahbar was of the opinion, no, that Gog and Magog are from the lineage of Adam, but not through Hawa, not through Eve. And he relates Ka'b al Ahbar that Adam السلام, went to sleep. And he had what we call, we call like a wet dream. Sayyidina Ka'b al-Ahbar's opinion. And then yeah, the, the sperm of Sayyidina Adam intermingled into air, and then from air came the forefather of what of God and Magog. And born from a father, uh, but without mother. God and Magog. Opposite to Jesus. Alayhi salam. Okay? And that's what he says. Although in Farad Abi al it's only Ka'ab ibn, 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 ibn al-Ahbar who's of that opinion. Most of the ulama tend towards no, that's not the soundest opinion, but the soundest opinion that they're actually from Banu Adam, Adam and Eve, and they're from the sons of Nuh, yani Yafif ibn Nuh alayhi salam. And from them, differences of opinion. Some say Gog and Magog, two tribes. From them, three tribes. Gog and Magog. And from them, 22 tribes. From them, 24 different tribes who together are known as Gog and Magog. And the Prophet says, Futi harad majuj wa majuj That the wall of the great king who ruled the east and the west, the entire world, Dhul Karnayn, Surah Al Kaf in the Quran, who, who finds them in what is known to be the Caucasus Mountains. That's what he finds, Gog and Magog. Okay? And the ulama the nearest people to them, they say, some say it's weak, but it's the issue of whom? Of the Turks. Some say the 24 tribes of the 22 tribes of Gog and Magog, all of them, that Dhul Karnayn, put them beyond the Great Wall, except the Turks themselves who remain. And so the Turks are from the offspring of what? Of Gog and Magog. That, that's there inside the, the works of the Imams, but he builds this Great Wall, a wall that is made out of lead and a wall that is made out of copper that is impregnable. And that wall is right there inside of the Caucasus Mountains. And that wall was found by Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. Umar ibn Khattab sent a delegation to find the wall of Gog and Magog. And if they find the wall inside of the Caucasus Mountains in and of itself. And they bring knowledge of that back to whom? Back to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa 
And so now they hold in inside of a mountain which has no sunlight. And the hadith of the Rasul وسلم, every single day, Gog and Magog are, are smashing their way at the wall. But on each and every single day, they get to the point where sunlight is about to penetrate the wall. And they say, leave it till tomorrow. The Prophet said, we'll come back tomorrow and break through. And then the next day when they come back, they find that the wall has been reformed. And so they're puzzled. In the Riwaya, they don't even remember where they broke through to the wall, nearly broke through the wall. They don't even remember that. They come back and they just see the wall as it was, and they begin to dig once again at the wall. Until they nearly break through. Then they say, we'll come back tomorrow and break through. And when they come back, the wall's been reformed. And this will continue and continue and continue until the day when they nearly break through and they say, we'll come back tomorrow, inshallah, if Allah so wills. And then the next day when they come back, they find the wall as it was, and then they break through, they smash through the wall. But what is showing you that the wall is now being opened by God and Maker, and that they're about to unleash terror upon what? Upon human society. And God and Maker, look, some of them are giants. God and Maker. You have some of them are giants. 197 foot tall. 120 on them. 197 foot tall, some of them. Some of them are tall like evergreen, pine trees. Another tribe from Gog and Magog. Some of them are Shiva. The Prophet said they're this high off the ground. Some of them are that high. Shibrain, off the ground. Some of them, they're so small, they can jump into your ear. Okay? Some of them, their height, as well as their width, is the exact same. So like they're square. And they're the weirdest of them. That's what he said, the ones who are square here. Are the weirdest of them. Gog and Magog. And look how they describe their hair. All hair around them. Gog and Magog. It's not the Banu Adam. How are they described? They have horns, some of them. How are they some of them have huge ears that they can wrap their ears around themselves? Some of them they can lay out their ears and lie upon their ears. Horns they have. Fangs they have. Claws they have. Claws. Some of them they're like pigeons. Like they hit, they just collapse like a pigeon. Like a pigeon, like they're empty inside. It's descriptions of God and Magog. Like animals, they howl. In the Ruayat, like Ru'us of Kila, like the heads of dogs. All like foxes, they howl. Like in the Quran, لا يكادون يفقهون قولا. You can barely understand what they're saying. Their words are un unintelligible. Like they don't speak no more. Like these are bestial. I mean, they eat elephants, they eat snakes, they eat scorpions. They eat themselves. Like they're cannibals. All of these inside the traditions describe them how they make up. And when they break loose, they break loose. The Prophet he mentioned that there are 400,000 of Gog and Magog. And one of them does not die until he sees 1,000 of his offspring manifest, all of them warriors. So it's a warrior race, 1,000 manifest. Like they procreate the likes of which we do not know. So many of the tradition of the Prophet that Allah will fill hellfire. And for every hundred people, 99 are going to hell. Of the most merciful interpretation of that is that Gog and Magog are 99% of human beings. And so what it means is Gog and Magog, not Banu Adam. That's a position some ulama say, although no doubt whatsoever in the issue of theology that there are people from monks who are not from Gog and Magog who are going to hell. And we ask Allah Ta'ala for safety and security from being of those who were sentenced for a moment, even without punishment, inside of the hell of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the tradition, he mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam on the night of Israel and Mi'raj, Allah Ta'ala sent him to Gog and Magog, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, to whom? I summoned them unto the oneness, belief in the oneness of Allah Ta'ala, wa ila ibadatihi, and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُ And they never answered my call, they refused. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast every single one of them inside of hell, Gog and Magog, alongside the, some of the offspring of Adam and alongside the offspring of Iblis, the devil, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the tradition of the Ibn Hamad radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa ta'ala, hakada, Gog and Magog. When they manifest, they begin to drink all of the rivers of the east. In the Riwayat, they drink the Euphrates, drink the entire Euphrates. Then they drink the entire Dejala, the Tigris. 
They get to what's called Lake Tabaria, they drink the entire lake. Such that the Rasul says when they move beyond the lake, the mid part of the army of Gog and Magog, and they're all in battle array. Gog and Magog, that what manifests? That they find that the this there used to be water here. Wasn't this a place of water? Because they still find the mud moist. And so they begin to suck the moisture out of the actual mud, Gog and Magog. And then when the mid part of the army move on, when the last ones arrive, they do not recognize whatsoever this is a place in which there was ever water. I mean, they consume and quote unquote all of the natural resources upon the face of the earth. Human beings flee for dear life. Those who are around Jesus, they're up on top of Mount Hood. Those who are not around Jesus, alayhi salam, they say they take to their habitats, they even bring their animals indoor, and everyone locks themselves underground because they just wreak havoc upon the face of the earth, Gog and Magog. Until Gog and Magog are going to declare supremacy upon the face of the earth. That now we've defeated everybody upon the face of the earth. And then what then do they do? They, they have, in the riot they have bows and arrows, all those of them have spears that they turn towards the heavens. And they say, now we declare war upon the inhabitants of the heavens. And they begin to fire arrows into the sky. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them into a state of delusion and deception, such that you see the arrows return back with blood on them. And the spears that they're throwing into the sky return back with blood upon them. And then they believe now they've conquered both heaven and upon earth. And at that point, Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of ghurur. Allah ta'ala inspired inside of Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, who da'a Allah. And he, who, who prays to Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he prays to Allah with subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, by virtue of the khalil of those few who are in your obedience, grant us victory over the kafir, these masses who are in a state of disobedience to you, Ya Allah. That's the dua of Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, upon Mount Sinai. And then Jesus will send a man to go to earth and he come down from the mountain to see what has taken place with Gog and Magog. And the man is certain he's going to be killed when he descends. For before he descends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends these little creatures that are like white worms. Although some say they're on four legs. That's like white worms. But they have like four legs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them to Gog and Magog. Some of them afflict their kafa, the back of their neck. Others of them inside of their noses. Others of them inside of their ears. And they begin to devour and kill every single last one of Gog and Magog. And so when he descends from the mountain, he finds all of them are dead. And then he returns back to Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam. And Jesus, with his people, is going to descend, alayhi salam. And then he's going to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have stank out the entire earth. It stinks with the rotten corpuses of Gog and Magog. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala notably brings forth a, a spring. And that spring is called Haya, life. And that spring then overflows onto earth and then it washes away all of the bodies of God and Magog into the sea once again. Okay? And that is one of the great sort of yani, uh, realities that Sayyidina Isa ibn Mariam alayhi salam will encounter upon his descent once again onto the, state, onto the face of planet earth. And thereafter you see the reality of Jesus alayhi salam and he play out. Jesus, as we said, he will frequent the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to make Hajj, as the Prophet said. Not only will he make Hajj, that he's going to yeah, he try to retrace the footsteps of the Prophet. <laughs> he will surely travel a specific path, the Prophet says. Doing Hajj or doing Umrah, or both of them, the Prophet said. Did he go to a place called Rahab, which is one of the exact places that the Prophet ﷺ tread upon outside of Medina Jumanawara, and it's from there he goes into a state of ihram. Say the Jesus of Mary as he was, and he goes on to Bayt Allah al Haram. And this is Jesus, the son of Mary What's important for us, he gives us context. I mean, what's going to happen at the end of time? Because all of the great battles that occur at the end of time, whether the battles with the Antichrist, or the battles with Gog and Magog, or, or the manifestation of what the others smoke that comes out of the Yemen or the reversal of what of this you know, planetary regression whatever they're going to call it of what the sun rising from the what from the from the um, west uh, sun rising from the west for three days many of the ulama have that all of these are going to happen in the lifetime of Jesus the son of Mary alayhi salam so that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends that final wind that is going to take the actual soul of each and every single believer for amongst the souls that it takes is the soul of Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam, 
as he's standing right there at the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and himself. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala for tawfiq. If anybody wants any additional elucidation, inshallah tabarakallah, you can take that inside the question time. Inshallah, we ask Allah taala for tawfiq. We ask Allah taala for nafar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to protect us inside of these difficult times. Allah taala to protect our hearts. Allah taala to protect our minds. And Allah subhanahu wa taala to protect our limbs and draw us close unto Him and unto His Messenger. Sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam. Make us of those who are constant upon truth. Make us of those who manifest truth. Make us of those who articulate truth. And make us of those who stand in defense of truth. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Although he is He's, he's, I said through his mother, he's, he's Jewish, okay? Through his mother, through Sayyidina Maryam, alayhi salam, that it's possible that he speaks Syriac, which was also a language of the Jews. So the Jews who were with the Prophet in Medina to Manawara, they spoke Syriac. The great Sayyidina Zayd ibn Thabit, the Prophet told Zayd ibn Thabit, go and learn Syriac. And it perhaps could be used in terms of refutation of the Jews. And he learned Syriac in 15 days. Sayyidina Zayd ibn Thabit, the great companion, Baraka in his time. Or he spoke Aramaic, which most sort of um, scholars of the Bible, and he preferred that he spoke Aramaic. And, and his name Isa. And Isa has, two, has many meanings. The meanings of Isa. What does Isa mean in, in the language? And Isa can be a camel, like a white camel, okay? But that has some type of sort of yeah, darkness in it, so that it may look like ginger. That's what they call Isa in the Arabic language. So it has that. In Arabic, Aramaic, Syriac, they're all. Semitic languages, so they share common etymological roots, meanings, okay? That's a meaning of Isa in the language. And the meaning of Isa also in the language is like the, the sperm of a stallion. So the meanings of Isa in the language. And then the third meaning, which is probably the most appropriate for Jesus, is like heavenly politics. He's the heavenly politician, saying Isa ibn Mahdi Ma'ala he knows the affairs of the, of the heavens and how that mandate of the heavens can be brought down to earth. Huh? Jesus, that's why he sent Hakaman as a Hakam, somebody who's a judge, and an Adlan, who's just, Muqsitan, who's equitable. Jesus would have made it alayhi salam. That's how he's going to rule. As the Prophet said in Bukhari, Muslim, and others, Yada al Jizya. Okay, that when he descends, La yaksiren na salim. And he's going to smash all crosses, break every single cross. Jesus is only made alayhi salam. And because that's not a representation of him. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ As Allah Ta'ala says, they never killed him, nor did they crucify him, but it was made to seem as if they did. شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ The cross it doesn't have no sort of signification. And Jesus is only made alayhi salam. And they destroyed that false idol. And likewise, he will murder and kill all pigs. Every single pig upon the face of the earth. Like, where did you get that from? None of the prophets have ever eaten, ever eaten any, the pig. And this way, you're going to legislate that which was not legislated. Okay? These are يعني, innovations that were brought into the, the ways of Banu Israel. And then likewise, also, jizya. Also, that he's going to avoid, he's going to abandon what's called the jizya. And what the abandonment of the jizya means? The jizya is like a, a tax that a non-Muslim citizen who lives in the Islamic world has to pay. A tax. The only tax they have to pay. And the tax of the Muslims, that Muslim have to pay, is what's called zakah. And the tax of the non-Muslims in an Islamic state is called jizya. As inside of the kitab and the sunnah. And Jesus will abandon the jizya, abrogate the jizya. And that's all the, the, the point of abrogation is already in the Sharia. It's not coming with a new law. Okay? The point of abrogation is already in the Sharia. It's just enacted by Jesus when he manifests at the end of time. And what does that mean? And nothing else but Islam is going to be acceptable when Jesus salam, manifests. That's why the Prophet وسلم, said that he's going to fight in the face of truth and in, and in defense of truth, saying Islam Maryam, and he's going to all mila. All other ways upon the face of the earth, khalas, will cease when Jesus manifests. It's going to be a glorious period upon his manifestation. Jesus is on the media, alayhi salam. And that's why you find in the tradition of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where the Prophet, sallallahu wa sallam, he said, Zuyat li al ard He said, the entire earth has been folded up for me. Min maqami hadha, from the place where I now stand. 
ولا سيصل ديني إلى ما زوية لي منها. And my religion shall reach that which was rolled up for me from the entire earth. مشارقها ومغاربها. The west and the east. The entire earth. And another riwayah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that there is not a house that is made out of wabar. Wabar is hair. Camel. Camel's hair. A tense of the, of the bedroom. There's not a house that is made out of wabar. Or that is made out of madar. Madar is adobe, made out of mud. Or that is made out of shajar. Shajar is like tree houses, some people live in. Or made out of hajar, made out of stone or brick. Illa sayyasinuddin, saying that my religion will reach that house. The Prophet sallallahu said. When is that? Wallahu la yutimu hadha al-amar in al-Bukhari. The affair shall be completed. It's in the age of Jesus, the son of Mary alayhi salam. That's when the affair will be completed. Huh? Oh, yeah. What is the meaning of the hadith that the Dajjal will appear on air for 40 days? One day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, the rest of the days like your days? The hadith means exactly what it means. Okay? It's, it's a very literal hadith, yani. that's how it's understood. That's the duration of the Antichrist. It's duration upon the face of the earth, what's called the final manifestation. Because as we learn, the Antichrist is old news, old, 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 the Antichrist. Uh, Antichrist, quote unquote, Arudu Billah, is, is alive and not well. So. Or the Antichrist is. Well, he has a final manifestation. Same with Jesus, the Son of Mary has a final manifestation. Same as Khidr salam, has a final man manifestation. Same as Ashab al Kahf has a final manifestation. The same as Zurayb ibn Burfal al has a final manifestation. They have final manifestation. Antichrist is amongst those creatures Allah Ta'ala has given and it, it extended life to. In the cave of the sleepers, is it in Turkey or Jordan? It's believed that it's in Turkey. Or is there a difference of opinion? Allah is a difference of opinion. But the Jordanians claim everything, Ali, to be perfectly honest. Everything's in Jordan, the truth. I wonder, subhanAllah, there are so many things there, mashallah. Allah bless the Jordanians. And how long will Sayyidina Isa Ali live on, on the second coming? That they have that Jesus of Mary is going to be upon here for 45 years. And others have most intuition say 40, but there is a tradition that says 45 years. And in total, and in the second coming of Jesus is sort of made Ali Islam. Okay. Now you here, here, Ali, please man, please forgive me for this question. There has been some mention that the hadiths you mentioned in your last talk regarding the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in America, Saddam Hussein were fabricated. Would you shed light on this, please? Ali is it is also alleged that the Shaykh Jibreel Haddad confirmed the fabrication also. There are those who say the hadith is fabricated, okay? Well, if the hadith is fabricated, and, and that, that can be a powerful point that the hadith is fabricated. But that's not the issue of quoting it. That's a hadith we took from our teachers, and our teachers, when we went back to our teachers, the hadith, some people say it's fabricated. Say the hadith is mentioned, what's called for fawaid al ilmiya It's mentioned for the benefit of knowledge. Because if, if the hadith is fabricated, and, and that's a point, and it could be, and it, khalas, that, that can be a point, the hadith fabricated, but the issue is look beyond the hadith being fabricated, the meaning of the hadith. Okay? Does that which exists inside of the meaning in the hadith in and of itself hold true? That's what you've got to look at. And so you're going to find many elements of that tradition that are corroborated in other traditions that people are not going to doubt. Okay? They're not going to doubt from the perspective of transmission. Yeah, need empirical transmission, nor are they going to doubt from the perspective of spiritual transmission in and of itself. And the affair ultimately, ultimately, is about spiritual transmission. And that was sort of introduction to our lecture. That this is the we are. The arsenal of it is in the second vessel, which is not empirical transmission, but it's spiritual transmission inside of the second vessel in and of itself. Okay? So, Allah Ta'ala Ya'ani. Yeah, if, if we have a problem with hadith that are fabricated, and we should have a problem with hadith that are fabricated. That's no doubt, yani. We study hadith with great people of hadith, mashallah, tabarakallah. And yani, how do you use a hadith that's fabricated? That's important, because if we're going to throw a hadith that's fabricated, then according to ulama, yani, we talk about fabrication, throw out ihya ulum din Don't read Ghazali's ihya ulum din Because hadith, never mind, quote unquote, fabricated, <laughs> Imam al-Iraqi, Abdul Rahim al-Iraqi, but say, la asla it has, no transmission, nothing whatsoever. That's and then in the way to the Muslims had that. Okay? But the point is, is yani the point here is how you use traditions. Okay? And that's the ultimate thing is if you're using it based upon yourself and you're plucking it from a, a book or you're plucking it from internet, that's one thing. 
and you should be held answerable to that. But if this is something you take from teachers, then khalas, then anyone has an issue, have an issue with the transmission in and of itself. Well, it's not with the deen, transmission is of religion. Well, all that is not the qalam and sha'at man sha'at. And if it wasn't for transmission, people would say whatever they wanted to say. Abdullah Mubarak ibn Sareen mentioned it in the beginning of Sahih Muslim. I have heard that our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Isa doing tawaf and of the Kaaba in a dream and later in the same dream he saw the Dajjal doing the same and what does this mean? And the hadith there, the hadith inside of that. The hadith inside of Sahih Muslim, the hadith there about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he saw Sayyidina Isa Ramadi inside of the dream state. Huh? That tradition describes Jesus to Sayyidina Mary Alayhi Salam in that, and that's, and it, that's there. You know, in, in the, in the complexion of Jesus, as an example, in that tradition, the complexion of Jesus, it mentions Ahmar and Abiyal. It's a dream of the Rasul. And it mentions, you see, Jesus, Ahmar, which language the Arabs can mean red, and Abiyal, which can mean fair. So, like our Prophet is, is Abiyal, Mushawush with Humra. He's fair with redness. That's how we describe the complexion of our Prophet. And in the, the hadith that the person is referring to, which is in Sahih Muslim, that's how Jesus is actually what is actually um, described as a complexion in the dream of the Rasul. And the ulama are at odds as to what it means. Uh, what it means. You know, the dominant they gave to the issue of Jesus being dark skin, Adam, Utman, which is lone and Arab, like Al he brings in his Isha'a. And that's the actual pull of Isa, Ibn Maryam. And that's Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al Khattab, the issue why it's given Tarjih. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al Khattab, the son of Umar ibn al Khattab, the great Abdullah. And he, he said, I ain't hear anybody saying Jesus is other than Adam. Heck, I submit to from the Rasul. This is what I hear about the complexion of Jesus from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab. Those who relate other complexions, that they are of whom, who say Abdullah ibn Abbas, it's on that tradition, and likewise saying Abu Hurairah, radiallahu anhum wa ardahum. Okay, so there's an ihtilaf in that regard. But that's the dream here, that he's saying Isa ibn Maryam is doing tawaf around the Kaaba, and there's two men, and he's holding on to the actual shoulders of two men. He's holding onto the shoulders of two men as he's doing tawaf around the Kaaba in the dream of the Prophet and the Prophet describes Jesus. And describes him by complexion, as we mentioned, and describes him also by his hair. That his hair is like it's it's like dripping with water. And then in another riwayah it says, although let you see although it's not moist. And so the ulama say it's metaphor, that the world of dreams is symbolic, that it's a metaphor for cleanliness. Jesus is, is clean, much like he makes tawaf around the Kaaba. Then thereafter, he sees the A'war of Dajjal, he sees the one-eyed Antichrist behind Jesus to Sunnah Mary alayhi salam. Although the ulama radiallahu anhum yastashkilun, they find that hadith problematic, that part. Why? They ask, how is the Antichrist there at the Kaaba? Okay, how is he at the Kaaba when he cannot enter inside of Mecca and Medina to al-Manawar? Although no doubt there's a complexity to that. First and foremost, it's an issue of what? It's an issue of the dream state. So it doesn't necessarily hold to be literal. Okay, it's literally the symbols behind it. And inshallah ta'ala, maybe we can look at that in another session, someone told me. Umar and Abu Bakr are made from the same soil. Yeah, and if someone told me that Umar and Abu Bakr are made from the same soil as the Messenger of Allah, does that mean Jesus is too? It's not like the exact same soil, because although they're in the same space, genetic space, as the Prophet Sallallahu but it's not the exact soil of the Rasul Sallallahu His space is his space, okay? But it's, it's, as, it's as close as you get. And likewise, Jesus, Son of Mary, obviously the principle they're asking about is the belief held that what that a human being is created from the soil that he is buried in? That's the soil Allah Taala uses to create you from. And so Jesus, so Abu Bakr is, yani, is buried next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar next to Abu Bakr, and Jesus next to um, next to Umar. Okay, so it's similar soil, but not necessarily the exact same soil. And how do I protect myself from Gog and Magog if they were to come about in my lifetime? Run. <laughs> They've not broken through, as we said, they break through in the time of Jesus. They have not yet broken through. Okay? Not yet broken through. And how long will, will the Mahdi and Sayyidina Isa be together during their respective, um, their respective, and some of them say like around seven years, some say like nine years they'll be together for. After, after, in terms of the, the, the Senate of the Mahdi, after the Mahdi call comes the Qahtani. 
comes the Qahtani, and he's the leader after the Mahdi, from amongst the Ahl Islam. And after Jesus, son of Mary, the heir of Jesus, somebody called Al Maqad, Al Maqad al Tamimi. Al Maqad al Tamimi, he's one after, after Jesus, he becomes the heir of Jesus. Tamimi meaning he's Arab likewise, from the tribe of Tamim, Banu Tamim. And of the great lieutenants of Jesus is, is the one we heard about before in our last session, the Shu'i bin Salih al Tamimi. And the Shu'i bin Salih al Tamimi likewise is of the great lieutenants of Jesus, and likewise of the Mahdi. Is it true that Jannah is a garden, forest with no houses, palaces, etc. And we must make dhikr and ibadah to build yeah, any palaces and horses and houses. Yeah, the hadith of the Prophet Islam, that alludes to that. that. Your palaces are being built based upon acts of worship and one likewise on dhikr. And, and, and that's why the Sahaba and the Prophet informed them that for each act that they'll have a palace, they say to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, look, at, look at the positivity of the Sahaba. Then we'll have a lot of palaces in Jannah, O Messenger of Allah. And then the Prophet said, Wallahu Akbar Atiyah. Allah is more and more beautiful. Right. Don't worry about that. And what would be the best way to explain the reality of Jesus and his message to a Christian? It may be as Sayyidina Ja'far, if a Tayyar. Jafar Nabi Talib when he was in the great land of Aqzum in Abyssinia in the Ethiopia when he recites to the Negus in the Najashi Surat al-Maryam so maybe so the recitation of Surat al-Maryam and a sound understanding of that Surah is something that maybe one should, should maybe base yani, a, a, yani, a, yani, their conversation with the Christian as it relates to the reality of Jesus to Surah al and the Quran, mashallah, Jesus is, is yeah, and by name is mentioned more than our Prophet وسلم, in the Quran, by name. And Jesus by the name Isa is mentioned 25 times. 25 times. And by, by the name of Masih is mentioned what? In 10 times. And our Prophet وسلم, by name is only mentioned 4 times inside the Quran. Okay? So, yeah, maybe take them to the Quran in and of itself, the Quran of Luke, mashallah. The Quran is filled with vicar of the great Jesus وسلم, says that all the people alive on the earth today will be dead after a hundred years so what does it mean as raised to Khidr okay? and, it, and you have to sort of reconcile that hadith which is sahih with other hadith which are sahih which speak about people who have extended life like a, a, a simple example here is, is, is the antichrist hadith sahih muslim that is alive upon an island and so what that and, and this is the time of the rasul sahaba met him saying the team of tamim al-dari rahimahullah ta'ala and so the point being that you have to reconcile that hadith with other ahadith. You can't take anything in isolation. Okay? Do you believe in some of the book and reject others? No, yeah, khalas. It's religion is holistic. And so the ulama radiallahu anhu wa dam, they give a simple way to understand that, which is called al hukmu al al ghalib. That ordinarily the ruling is in accordance to what is normal or the majority. So the Prophet is speaking in that language. When it means everybody upon earth, he means the vast, 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 vast majority of people upon earth will not be alive in a hundred years' time. He doesn't mean every single person. That's how it's understood. Because all the hadith qualify the hadith. And that's really important in some, when we look at it in legal theory and others. Hadith interpretation. Ziyara of the noble Prophet sallallahu May Allah ta'ala increase you in nur and obedience and attachment to the Prophet sallallahu And the dream is a true dream, as our Prophet was informed us in the Sahih. He told me to inform the Ummah that the fitna of the Dajjal is about to unleash 
and to increase their taqwa if they want to join the Mahdi alayhi salam who will be gathering his forces soon. That's his, that's his true dream as it comes. InshaAllah, may Allah ta'ala increase you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to become those whose taqwa is increased and whose heart is fortified. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you min nasiri and those who grant victory to Allah, to his messenger and to those who tread the path of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa when Isa alayhi salam comes, is the door of forgiveness closed? No, the door of forgiveness is not closed. Although the option, quote unquote, to coexist in another religion is closed. That is closed. But the door for forgiveness for sin is not closed. The door of forgiveness, as the Prophet Islam, is closed at two points. Either gharghara insan, at the point of death, gharghara, that's when the door of forgiveness is closed. And the second is when the sun rises from the west. As soon as the sun, when the sun rises from the west and gives up no light for a three day period, the door of forgiveness is closed, the Prophet Sallallahu informed us. Alright, we've got some Black Panthers in the room here. Will there be a revolution? What is your opinion? <laughs> In your last talk, you mentioned England won't be a Muslim country. And it, I, I don't think I said that. I don't think I said England will be a Muslim country. I said the King of England will be a Muslim. But often the King of Abyssinia was a Muslim. And Abyssinia never became Muslim. Oh, so, yeah, let's qualify statements here. Although in England, mashallah, we did mention that it's good. The future of England is good. It's a blessed land we live on. Although I know there's, there's some who are here who believe that England is the island of the Antichrist. Allah well, alam. That's something I've heard from my teachers. But I suppose if that's what you believe, that's what you believe. And we hope it's not. Do you know what time period this will be in? I don't know. During the time of Imam Mahdi or Isa, maybe during your time. So that's as we said, what's really important is we personalize all of this. Again, this is not sort of entertainment, this is ilm, this is knowledge. And this knowledge it leads to salvation, but knowledge only leads to salvation upon implementation. So we all have to become the changes that we want to see in society. So if you want to see England as a Muslim country, make sure the country of you is first and foremost Muslim. Some say that Gog and Magog are already here, and they quote the Hadith that a whole appeared at the time of the Prophet Yes, as we said, they are already here. Some say that Isa alayhi salam has already passed away, as in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala used the mutawafiq, which translates as death. Well, no, you translate it as death. The fact that Jesus is alive, khalas, that's beyond, beyond, beyond doubt that Jesus is still alive inside of the heavens. Hay, Jesus alayhi salam. We use the word several times, okay? So, mutawafiq, the word mutawafiq, or the word wafa, the Arabic language, the word wafa in the Arabic language is about the fulfillment of a term. Does it literally mean death? The mutawafika wa rafi'uka. Okay? We allow you to fulfill your first term. Okay? Upon the year, 33 and a half years. And then we're going to raise you into the skies. Okay? Akada. So it's, it, it doesn't literally translate as death, although it can be used in the language of the Arabs as death, because when you die, you fulfill your full term. So it's from that perspective, it can be used as death. No doubt, wafa can be used as death. But that's not what it means inside the Quran. There's not a single Imam of Ahlul Islam who said it means death inside the Quran. Okay, that's like the stuff, like the Imams, like whom Sheikh Abdul Fatah Abu Khudda Rahimullah Ta'ala had the tahqiq of one of the Imams of Kashmir, who wrote a refutation upon the Qadiyanis. The Qadiyanis are the type of belief that Jesus السلام, is already dead. That's not the belief of Sunnah al Jama'ah, it's not the belief of Ahlul Islam. Okay? Is this a proper belief? No, it's not. If someone doesn't believe, in Isa alayhi salam, return, is it kufr? Well, I don't think we should necessarily worry about is it kufr or not. Leave that to the Imams of Islam to worry about who's doing kufr and who isn't. We are currently living in the city. It's very good towards a better community. And if God and may God deny Allah, then why would they say, Inshallah? I mean, you're, you're in a country where people say, God willing. 
Oh my God, they say. And, and they could be atheists. I mean, the, the usage of it doesn't necessarily mean that they quote and that, yeah, the usage of it doesn't mean they believe as in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not what it necessarily means. Okay, and if people can use terms that doesn't apply, but we know the hadith that they're going to be in hell for Gog and Magog. Wow, Muslims are beautiful, man. This good question if, if God and Magog deny Allah, then why will they say, inshallah, will we see Isa in our lifetime? In the next 30 to 50 years, will Jesus السلام, know the Quran? And then, how do you deal with waswasa in wudu? Inshallah, keep him safe. Inshallah, Allah 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 keep him saf